You say that the Big Bang occurred everywhere and it also contained every when. Please explain that. Well, uh, I'm not sure if we said every when, but the Big Bang uh, occurred. Everywhere, in, right? It occurred so it in a small region. all of time. <clears throat> no, uh, it set up the beginning of time and then the universe evolved from those early beginnings. The early stage was very, very simple and smooth, according to our standard modern picture. Uh, there were only very, very slight differences, about 30 parts per million, in density of matter, of radiation, from place to place. But that was enough to cause tremendous differences later on. Galaxies formed here, no galaxies formed there. And that's because in one region Where there was a little bit more density. Where did the energy come from for the Big Bang? The, according to the standard inflation picture, almost all the energy was in a field that we call the inflaton. In That's, the field called the? Uh, it's a quantum field, uh, a scalar field, meaning it had no direction, uh, called the inflaton. And uh, it's a very simple theory to write down. It turns out that if you have such a field, uh, a, a scalar quantum field, that isn't at its lowest energy state, it will automatically cause this extremely rapid expansion. But the energy that was generated is still the same amount of energy? Not exactly. So uh, it, this idea of conservation of energy, it's built into general relativity, but in a way that isn't the same as we learn in elementary physics. So the energy of space-time is conserved. Everything is, is conserved, but in a funny way that you have to actually learn about general relativity to understand. Ordinary energy conservation doesn't work. So now 400,000 years go by, and then what happens? Well, actually, we know about a lot of things that happened right after the Big Bang. So uh, Steve Weinberg wrote a wonderful popular book called The First Three Minutes. Yes. I guess three is a nice number. Mm -hmm. It's actually more like 10 minutes over which these events occurred. But that's when most of the light elements were formed. Most of the deuterium and most of the helium was formed in the first few minutes. Uh, and of course, the protons. But everything was mathematically precise, right? Well, the theory predicted, depending on, on the density of ordinary matter and of dark matter and dark energy, the theory predicted just how much of these light elements get formed. And we've now been able to measure precisely the amount of deuterium, heavy hydrogen, and fairly precisely helium. And the agreement is really spectacular with the predictions. So, I want to come to that so this tells us of some of what happened. But I'm trying to bring in the so-called anthropic principle here, that the, the calculations are so precise that if these constants uh, were off by a few decimal points, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Is that true? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a little more complicated. But uh, there was a period when people were quite excited about these so-called anthropic arguments, mm -hmm. uh, which has to do with the universe being fine-tuned for creatures like us to exist. Available on CuriosityStream. Watch premium factual shows at curiositystream.com.